Hello bees bladers, welcome back and welcome newcomers to the channel. I have five questions I'm gonna answer today. One, are these good everyday carry folding pocket knives? Two, how do you disassemble and clean them? Three, does a folding knife perform better when it's cleaned and maintained? Four, are these gonna be worth the price? And five, should you buy them? So let's get in here and check out number one, which is the Fit, Finish, Action, and Ergos. We're gonna start this right now. I hope you're having a fantastic day, and I am having a fantastic day. I often get asked about the knives that I have on the channel. They're like, well, what do you think about it? Do you like it? Is it worth the money? Do you like budget knives? Well, I absolutely, Absolutely, I absolutely love budget knives. This is the Remet Rhino, the D2 version. These are $28, and the question is, is it gonna be worth it? How do you take it apart? How do you clean a liner lock in general? We're gonna go over that here real quick. Now, I can tell you from experience with these two knives, this is just two different versions of the Remet Rhino, a little hot in this Rhino. I can tell you already that it does have good fit, there are, there's no blade play left or right on either one of these knives. Both of them have good lockup right in the middle. Both of them are centered also, and we're talking about a sub $30 knife here. And if you look right here, this is centered. <laughs> this one right here, where's the other end? I gotta put it up there so you can see it. Both of them are centered. Neither one of them has any blade play, so the fit, is really good on them. The action on both of these are drop shetty. I haven't done anything to them. I haven't lubed them. I haven't cleaned them at all. Now, if you look right here, they actually have some room from the plunge grind down here to the heel. You have room for sharpening. And then I'll tell you about this right here in just a minute. We have a fuller and the question is, is this a usable fuller? Is there anything we can do with it? Now check this out. Look at that. Very nice texture on that G10. Give you a little bit of texture vision. And this also has a reversible pocket clip. Now it's sitting on top of the G10, but we're talking a sub $30 knife here. So the fact that it doesn't have any round mushroom head screws sticking out is very nice. Very, very nice. And look at this. All you lanyard lovers, it has a stop pin or not a stop pin, but a pin. So you can put a lanyard in there, but it doesn't take away from the general aesthetics of this knife. Now a couple quick size comparisons for you. And you know what? I hope you are having a really good day and I'm excited a lot of people have been asking me for so long please do another disassembly video I'm like I will I will I will well guess what I'm finally doing it here is the CJRB pyrite and then this is the QSP penguin the button lock baby now now you know what we're stepping in this is a medium sized knife it's just a tad bit beefier than the, the three that I'm showing here this is the Civivi Elementum 2 button lock and to give you a comparison a size comparison with the width of the QSP Penguin. Let me just show you like this and like that and like this. And uh, for thickness wise, it's almost identical to the thickness of the QSP Penguin. It's uh, if we just get down here and try to get them right next to each other, it may be just a hair thicker, but it's about the same thickness as the QSP button lock penguin. It's something else fun that I used to do on all my videos and then I kind of got away from it is given, given measurements. People like, you know, hey, can you tell me the millimeters? Can you tell me how long? You can always go, I will always have links in the description and in the comment section where you can go and check out the knife themselves and they always have that stuff listed, but it's also fun to check it out. So this is coming in at about 7.25 inches and then look at this, we'll get the old calipers out here and then your blade length your sharpen length on this is coming in right at about 79 well actually 80 millimeters and then if you want to know for sure it's 3.14 inches and then your blade height this is all the fun stuff Folks that are new to the knife community that aren't used to this stuff may have never got to see this because the knife community kind of faded away from giving all the numbers. This is 1.04 inches tall or 26.6 millimeters. And all of these numbers are really fun for all of us knife nuts and knife aficionados and knife collectors. So this is coming in at about right, right there at three millimeters for your blade stock thickness, which is gonna be 120 thousandths of an inch. And in keeping with the fun, because this is going to be a fun video because we're going to disassemble. We're doing all that fun knife stuff. Now, I usually take multiple measurements when I'm getting behind the edge, but we'll just take one right here and see what we are. And I'm going to change this to inches because that's what, well, <laughs> inches are what I'm used to. But if I go here and just take a quick little measurement behind the edge, I'm coming in at 16 thousandths of an inch. So nice and slicey and thin behind the edge. But now that you have some numbers, let's take a look here. A little bit of our 
our, our, we've already checked out the fit and I'm telling you the action is very smooth. This is a look at this one. I'm thinking this is like a PVD coating. I'm not exactly sure. You would have to check out the link to get that exactly. This one here looks like it's bead blasted and just taking it down. They're both very well made. They're both robust. They feel good in the hand. You know, I have a large width hand, right? I gotta say it, four inches from here to here, three and a half from here to here. And from the bottom of my palm to the tip of my middle finger is seven and a quarter. And the ergos are pretty darn good. Now, keeping in mind that this is a $28 knife, I can feel these edges right here. If I get you up close, see how this little fine edge right here is kind of 90 degree-ish. It's not hurtful, it's not hateful, but it's one of those things that you do notice. It is worth pointing out. And if I'm holding this in the classic grip like this, I can feel this pocket clip because it sets so high on top of the scale. I'm feeling it in my hand. So if you had a medium sized hand, I think this knife would fit you really well if this is how you're holding it. I'm calling that a warm spot, almost a hot spot, not quite a hot spot, but holding it in this, this way right here in the traditional fashion, obviously I don't have any problems with that. And then I love this blade shape. It's a very nice looking drop point. And then cutting like this, is very comfortable. I like how it locks in my hand. So the ergos are not bad. They're not the best, they're not the worst. It all depends on the size of your hand and whether or not this pocket clip is gonna hit you and how hard you're using this knife and how you hold this knife. So that's a very subjective thing because if I turn the knife just a little bit and put this down into the palm, then that pocket clip doesn't get me as much. So that's all gonna be relative and keeping in mind that this is a $28, it's under 30 bucks. It's a banger. You can throw in the truck, you can throw in your tackle box, you can have in the glove box. This, this is a good knife. It is very slicey. I like the taller grind on it. I like the looks of it. It's a very good looking knife. Now, your action on it, reverse flicking, it's not really a thing for me with this knife because you have this fuller, that it's not sharp up here. So getting my thumb in there or my, my middle finger, yeah, that's my thumb. Getting my middle finger in there, I can do it, but I kind of have to concentrate. So if you concentrate and you know where you're putting your middle finger, not everyone is as dexterous as I am. Some folks are a lot more dexterous and some folks are less, obviously. But you can do a reverse flick on here if you know to stick your middle finger in the back, right in that hole, right there next to, and I'm kind of using the thumb stud to do the reverse flick. So that could be done. And then here's a look at your flipper. The flipper doesn't have any jimping. So that, that is a nitpick with me, but knowing it's a $28 knife, it doesn't bother me. Check it out. Here's the push button. Comes flying out with the Thor tie. And then here is the light switch. The action, I have no problems. Now, here's something to, to, be, to take note of. You can see that they have this milled out just a little bit, but they didn't really take off any on the inside so you can get better access to that liner lock. I am a nitpicky, I'm a nitpicky person when it comes to access to the liner lock. This one, you do have to commit your thumb and push. It's not hateful, you can get in there. It's just not as comfortable as some other knives. So if I made a suggestion, I would say, for Remet, just to take off just a hair, just a millimeter or so, maybe a millimeter and a half of right here, just to make it even that much more comfortable to get on the inside. Now they do have more than one version of this. They have these in 14C, 28N, et cetera, et cetera. I'll have links where you can go check out the different versions, but the action, the ergos, they're all good. Let's get in here and take a quick disassembly and then we'll talk about more of what I think about this knife. Oh, and I almost forgot something that we used to always do. We always weighed the knives. Let's see how much this one weighs. Let's see if there's any difference. So the OD green version is coming in right there at four ounces. And how about the black one? Any difference? Right there at four ounces. This one weighs just a hair, just a hair less. All right, now let's get in here and let's do which one do I want to disassemble? We'll disassemble one of these and then show you how to maintain it and clean a, a knife that has a liner lock. And we're going to do that right now. And since it's been so long, because I've done a video like this, I'm going to show you. This is what I recommend. If you haven't got or started a kit for taking care of your knives and you just got into knife collecting, or maybe you've been in it for a while and haven't got around to taking your knives apart and realizing how much of a difference it makes. This is a Weeha bit set. You can't go wrong because it's two in one. Number one, it's a bit driver. So you have this right here you can use. And a lot of times with knives, especially if you're getting into budget knives, you might need two drivers to start out. This has all the sizes you need of Weeha bits. 
nice. And then this one right here is, if you wanna go a little Mr. Fancy Pants, this one has all the sizes you need also. And I usually use the T6 and T8 the most, so I always have them upside down. And this is a very nice driver. Another driver that you will see on other channels, because this is such a good bit, a bit driver, and it gives you a really good handle, gives you good torque, is this one right here. I'll have all of these listed down below. And then if you wanna get a little fancy, this dude right here, this CRKT bit driver, I don't know if you can see that spinning or not. These are only $21, and this is this really made me feel fancy. And then, of course, the ones I'm gonna be using today is, they're super fancy. This is getgoodscrew.com. These these are uh, when you're really into it. You wanna spend, spend the big bucks and get something super nice. But I don't wanna digress too much. But here is Loctite. Make sure when you get Loctite, that you, uh, use the ones that I have in the link, so don't get the wrong kind. This is Thread Locker. It's removable. This is Blue 242. You don't want to put the wrong you don't want to put red loctite in there and then you can get these on amazon these are really cheap sometimes you can't get a knife apart and you want one of these spudge little spudgers little spud bars to get in between to pop them open and then you have these the doodads i always call these doodads for all you folks that have been around with the channel for a while these are super cheap you can get packs of these on amazon and then some good old q-tips now here's a couple other things is kpl knife Pivot Lube. I have Knife Pivot Lube Heavy, Knife Pivot Lube Original. There's some other ones, but these are the ones I mainly use on all my knives. And you'll see me use these in a second. And here's another tip. If you don't want to use Loctite, this is something else you can use in a pinch. And I've used it on quite a few knives. You can use a little bit of plumber's tape to, to hold your screws in. If you have a screw that comes loose on your knife, you can always use this to keep it from coming undone. Now, let me clean this up and let's get inside this knife real quick. Now, when I take apart a liner lock, I typically, me personally, I usually start from the clip side and that most of the time works out for me and tends out to be, tends to be the right one to loosen first. Now, we're getting ready to find out if this has a D-shaped pivot or if the pivot spins. Let's see what happens. Now, if you look here, the pivot is spinning. So that means this does not have a captive pivot. It does not have a D-shaped pivot. Now, a lot of knives these days, they have learned to make a D-shaped pivot. So because of this, I'm trying to loosen this and it's just spinning. And I'm trying to put pressure with this finger. That's not doing it, which means that this is a perfect example of why you would need two bits. Now I'm going to have to get another T8. And T8, T8 Torx bit are typically what you'll see in modern pocket knives in the pivot. Now this right here isn't something I've had to deal with in a while because most knife companies have learned to not do a, see here, I'm, have, I'm gonna have to hold this on this side and try to pay attention to what I'm saying while I unscrew it from this side. So it, luckily it's coming out very easily so that was not a big deal, but you saw I did need something to hold this side. So let's put this dude up here and I hope you're all having a really good day. I'm, I'm kind of enjoying this. I used to do these disassembly videos a lot. And then, you know, well, time and different things have happened and it's became very, very busy, very busy. And well, you know, it's uh, it takes twice as long to edit a video and when the video is twice as long. So here's a look at the inside of your G10. You can see there's all kinds of goopy goop there. And let me get my microfiber cloth. You can just get cheap microfiber cloths off Amazon, cut them into little pieces like this, and then you can get some 91% uh, isopropyl alcohol. And that is really nice to use when you're cleaning because it evaporates quickly, but you can get all the gunk and grime. And depending on the knives, if you're getting very budget oriented knives and you're just starting out, some of those knives may not be the cleanest. Now here's a look at the inside, a little bit of pocket fuzz because I have had this in the pocket. Now let's see if this one comes apart easily. Um, now this is where a plastic spudger comes into play where I'll go like this and put in the back and just kind of turn sideways makes it easy. I don't ever want to take a chance of cutting myself. You don't cut, you don't want to cut yourself. Now here is a look. Let's see what it looks like on the inside. We have a little bit of grime, a little bit of debris on the inside there. And then you can see at the edge right here where that is a little burnt, which that's not a big deal on the inside at the tang. But looking right here, you can see that where that edge is also a little burnt and we're going to clean this out. Put this over here, take this out, pop out our pivot. And this also, it has a, a little race bearing or a, I think that's what you call it, a little race washer right there to help the, uh, the ceramic bearings slide around. And these are ceramic bearings. Check that out. 
you know, I like me some ceramic bearings. Let's see if I can get focused because my focus needs more focus. And I believe this is like a nylon casing, but these work, they work very well. And this is a budget knife. Um, the only thing, you know, I it's, it's a nitpick, but it's not that big of a deal that we do not have a D-shaped pivot. But when we're only talking about a $28 here knife, that's really not a big deal at all. So I, I'm used to doing these really fast when I do them myself, but I'm just letting you see that I'm wiping everything off because just little bits of grime and pocket lint and things like that. Let's see there how much cleaner that is just by wiping it off. And then let's see if I can get this. Uh, see there, you can just use a magnet to get those out of there. And is there one on both sides? Yes, there is one on both sides. So we'll take both of those off. We're gonna clean those. There is a little bit of gunk and a little bit of grime on those. So let's start the whole cleaning process. I don't have to take all of this apart to clean it. And this side here, my screws wanting to fall out. So I have my finger on this side, just keeping those screws in there. There's no reason to take those off to clean this. And I'm cleaning on the inside and not a whole lot came off. Now you can see that it's really nice and clean. So there's that. Now I'm going to clean this side. There's, this is a relatively clean. So sometimes when you get a budget knife from the factory, it will be really gunky. It'll be gritty. You can literally feel the grit. And this one, I'm not feeling grit. So that's a good thing. I just sprayed a little bit of alcohol on this bad boy just to clean the inside out. I want everything to be nice and clean and smooth. And when you use, when you use a, uh, anything. You use this or a microfiber uh, little doodad. You can get up in the corners. You want to get all the gunk out and make it work really nicely. Now, let me clean these bad boys. And you can, you can see already that this is a simple process getting it clean and it's not a hard process getting it back together. Now, here's another piece of advice. And this is coming from someone who owns hundreds of knives is I don't typically put Loctite on my screws unless I find that the knife I have, those screws are coming. There's a screw that's coming loose. Like if it's a pivot, You'll see when we put the pivot back in here, sometimes a pivot will come loose and the blade will be loose. That's when I'm like, okay, this is one that I need to do some Loctite on, which is no big deal. Um, when you do use some Loctite, you want to let that Loctite set for about 24 hours. So the only thing that really sucks about that is you don't get to play with the knife because a lot of us knife enthusiasts, we like to play with our knives. But here is a look at the inside of this knife. If you wanna take a screenshot and you have a Remet Rhino and you wanna see what it looks like on the inside, I have to remember, there's a lot of folks that are watching this video right now. They have never taken a knife apart. They didn't know you could take folding knives apart. And there you go. And if you're one of the regular bees bladers, hello, hope you're having fun. If you're driving down the road right now, don't watch. You can always look later. We have a lot of folks that listen while they're working or they listen while they're driving down the road. They listen to the videos and they listen to the live streams. Hey, every Friday night, Bees Blades live at the hive. All right. Don't miss it. 8.15 to around midnight every Friday night. Come to Bees Blades. You will have a lot of fun. This right here is the detent hole and I'm going to put a drop. Yes, Ken, I did remember to put a drop of KPL heavy. Sometimes, oh, look at that. I missed. It plopped out. Don't you hate it when it comes out prematurely like that? And let's see, I'm just going to put one drop in here. If I can get this started and I'm, and this is to just help it run a, just a tad bit smoother. I'm just going around, just adding just the slightest bit. You don't need that much, a little dabble do ya. You know what I'm saying? And I probably don't even that, need that much, but I'm just having fun showing you right now. So we'll set this dude over here out of the way for a minute. I'm going to put my pivot on this side, the show side just like that. And it doesn't matter which direction it is because it's not a D-shaped pivot. Now here's my stop pin. And this is where I'm going to get my KPL. I'm a little heavy handed. So I like to use doodads. Some people don't, but I like to use these doodads as I call them, little microfiber swabbies. So I don't use too much KPL and it's just swimming in it. So you can, all you do is go inside here where you're going to put those race bearings. I'm going around the pivot just to make sure everything is nice and libby dubed. And then I'm going to put this dude in. I've already lubed that side so I can put this guy on and then put a little bit of lube on this one. Hopefully, uh, make sure I'm zoomed in so you guys can see. There you go. Just put a little bit on this one so we know that's lubed. And now I'll get one of these bad boys and just put a little bit on this one. Just go around. It doesn't take much. I'm telling you. Put that guy on there. 
and then just spin that around and make sure there's a little bit of looby doob on all of those. And then now that's done. And then let's put this uh, little backspacer doodad back where it goes right there. And you can see this is not that intimidating. It's not that difficult. There's not that many parts. It looks like a lot of parts, but there's really not. I'm going to put some lube on the, that right on that side <laughs> on this and that, and then put some on this side and I put it in the middle. So that's all you have to do lube wise. Now we'll put this bad. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah, we already have everything we need on that side. That way, if you're following along and then you're taking a knife apart and this is your first time, you can follow along. Now I'm going to put this dude, just put a little bit on this side. Put that guy on there. Put that ceramic bearings, which I love ceramic bearings. They're very nice. Now we have them on that side. And look at that. We're ready to get this guy back together. We already have lube on there. So I can put this guy on there like that. And then just put a little bit on here, just maintains it, makes everything run nice and smooth. And now we're ready to put it back together. And now all we have to do is get this liner. I'm putting a little bit on this side right here. And you can see I've only used like maybe two, two and a half drops of KPL. And let's see if we can get in there. See there? That's all you need. You don't need it dripping out all over the place. Some people really go overboard and, and overuse the knife pivot lube. You don't need that much. It'll just make a mess. So let's see if I remembered everything and everything is going to go back into place where it should be. Yeah, look at that. Nice and snappy. And then this dude will go where it goes. Oh yeah, now we're ready to put the screws back in. So even though this knife wasn't very dirty at all, all it had was just a little bit of pocket lint, you will find that after you carry in a knife for a while, you will get some grime in there. If you work in the dirt or anything like that and your knife gets grimed up, and I'm gonna tighten this down fairly tight, pretty snug, and then I'll put the back screws in, but you'll find that it makes such a giant difference when you take a knife apart and you put a little bit of lube on it, give it a little bit of maintenance. Now, what you can do, you can get right from the get-go, you can use lock stick, all right? You can use some Loctite, and this is all you would do, and I'm gonna tell you, a little dab will do you. You can put just a tad, just the smallest little bit amount. That's almost too much. You can just put a little bit of that before you put the screw in, but like I said, what I do is I wait and I see if a particular knife is gonna, the screws are gonna get loose, but I check my screws. So if you're not gonna check your screws periodically and you don't have like a little keychain T6 or something like that, you might wanna go ahead and Loctite your knife after you've cleaned it like we just did, just to make sure that you don't end up losing a screw. So check your screws, you don't wanna screw loose. I check mine often just because, well, I'm a, I'm a knife nerd and a knife nut, and I did I just lose a screw? Oh, there it is. And I, I'm often very aware. And if you get loose up here, if, if your blade, if you get a little bit of wobble back and forth after you flipped your knife 30 times, 40 times, go ahead and take that pivot out and put a little bit of lock stick on it, or a lock Loctite on it, and let it set for a day. And then you're not gonna have to worry about that. Let's see, is this dude going in? Yep, he's going in and tightening. Now, do we have everything tight? Let me check my screws, make sure these aren't loose. Make sure this dude isn't loose. Oh, see that one needed a little bit of tightening. Now, let's see how it feels. Let's go out to the big screen. Now, this is a prime example. We have a sub $30 knife. You saw everything I did. I didn't have to tweak it, I didn't have to torque it. I did just what I did. I haven't made any adjustments. And look at this. It's already centered. The blade is centered. It has good action. It's a little smoother than it was, just a hair, because we, oh yeah, that feels really good. So this is a good knife. Now you know how to clean and maintain a liner lock. Most liner locks are gonna be like that. Now here's something, when you tighten that down, if you get it and there's wobble, tighten the screw just a little bit, not a lot, just a little at a time, just until there's no wobble, and then that's gonna make it as smooth as it possibly can be. And most of the time, if you take your knife apart and put it back together just like I did, tighten the pivot down first, most of the time you don't have to fool around with centering your blade. They'll be centered. Most knives, just they're made well these days, even the budget knives like this one. So there is the Remet Rhino, and that is how you clean and maintain a liner lock. Wait a minute, you know what? I was getting ahead of, ahead of myself. I had questions I was supposed to answer. The number three question is, does it improve? Yes, it improves. When you, when you disassemble a knife, it does improve the performance when you clean and maintain it. And then the last question, which I almost forgot, is should you buy it? I think if you have 30 bucks and you want a nice, reliable, everyday carry pocket knife with good action, good ergos, 
good materials. I mean, it's D2 tool steel. It's not the most, I mean, it's not the most stainless tool steel or steel altogether, but it's a great budget steel. You could go with this one that's coated. That's going to help you with corrosion resistance. But if you're in the 30, 30 and under price range, there's no way you could possibly go wrong. I would say, yes, buy it. You're going to like it. You're going to enjoy it. I would say the only folks that might have an issue is if you have XL hands, this might, and this is probably going to be a little too small for you. And Unless you want to do this and wrap your pinky around the end, then I think you're going to be okay. But with my large hands, it's just big enough for me, and this is an enjoyable knife. It's going to be a great one that I'm not worried about scratching, or if I drop it on the ground, I'm not worried about what happens to it. So I would say, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. I don't have anything bad to say. And if you have any questions, come to the live stream and I can do some size comparisons or we can take it apart again and I can answer any questions. Now go watch this video. You're really going to enjoy that. And until I see you again in the lives or the chats or the high stream and right after you hit the thumbs up button, remember, live life in the present, keep a band-aid handy, and don't cut yourself.